Hello, Danny Blythe from the College of Integrated Chinese Medicine, looking at small intestine syndromes. Please pause and read this. Remember, this is for acupuncture students only. The small intestine is the separator of the pure from impure. So it separates in terms of ideas and our emotions to puts us on the right path. And in this way, it acts as a kind of buffer for the heart. It does the same thing in relationship to food. And it's aided in that by the movement of the liver chi and heat from the spleen and it does the same thing for the fluid separating and sorting the fluids and it works closely with the bladder with this which is paired with small intestine and bladder and under the power of the kidneys in tcm it's something of a poor cousin it's given the role of receiving transformed food from the stomach and transforming fluids from the bladder Symptoms to look out for for the small intestine, the main one is borybrygmus, which is grumbling, rumbling, gurgling noises from the lower abdomen as food and gas travels through the digestive tract. Also lo local abdominal pain and bloating. So the syndromes we're going to look at, they're all kind of borrowed syndromes. Uh, we've got small intestine full heat, which is basically heart fire which is transformed into the small intestine and because of its relationship with the fluids manifests in the bladder. We've also got small intestine chi pain, um, which is essentially liver chi stagnation inv invading the spleen and the small intestine. And if it's severe, we call it small intestine chi tide. And then one that you don't have to learn, which is small intestine deficient and cold, which is essentially spleen yang deficiency when it particularly affects the small intestine. Small intestine, full heat. We get heart fire symptoms, so mental restlessness, insomnia, mouth and tongue ulcers, hot feeling in the chest, thirst for cold fluids. We also get some small intestine not separating the fluids which manifest in the bladder, so scanty dark urine, burning pain on urination. If it's severe and it's become fire, blood in the urine. This is essentially like bladder damp heat, but with a very strong emotional element coming from the heart via the small intestine into the bladder. Can also get abdominal pain, and if the channel is affected, deafness, the, the small intestine channel ends up in the ear. Pulse will be overflowing, especially in the heart and small intestine, rapid, and may be wiry on the kidney and bladder. Tongue will be red, especially the tip, which is red and swollen, and the coat yellow. And this is essentially interior full heat of the small intestine. In terms of etiology, we get obviously heart fire blazing, giving from emotional problems is the main cause. It can also be exacerbated by dietary excess, so heating food, alcohol, drugs, things like that. We clear heart and small intestine fire, so the yin spring points, small intestine two, heart eight, the best points for clearing heat and fire. Small intestine five and eight are also good for clearing heat. We use heart five, which is the low connecting point of the heart, uh, which helps to balance the heart and small intestine. And stomach 39 is the lower per C point for the small intestine. And you'll see this point coming up for all of the small intestine syndromes. Small intestine chi pain, which is essentially stagnation of chi in the liver manifesting through into the small intestine. So we get lower abdominal twisting pain. For, it's like a twisting, cramping, um, severe pain, which can extend into the back. And we get borobrygmus. There might be abdominal distension, flatulence. The pain's worse with pressure, better for passing wind. And there may be a channel may be affected and it may give pain in the testicles as well. Pulse deep and wiry, especially on the rear positions, manifesting that lower jowl. Tongue coat will be white. This is essentially, if it's very acute, interior full cold, which is liver chi stagnation. If it's mixed and more chronic, this is interior cold, but a mixture of fullness of liver chi stagnation, deficiency of spleen chi deficiency. This can be caused by too much cold raw food depleting spleen yang or more commonly emotional problems stagnating the liver chi um, we move the chi in the lower jowl using the usual points 
Ren 6, Spleen 6, Stomach 27, 29. Um, we also disperse the liver, move the chi in the liver using some of the usual points, liver 3, gallbladder 34, liver 13. And the lone representative for the small intestine is the lower C point, stomach 39. If this is very severe, we call it small intestine chi tide. So something that's very severe, something that's very acute, something very full, we may get constipation and vomiting with it. And this is things like appendicitis, burst cyst adhesions. Now obviously appendicitis needs emergency treatment and possibly surgery. Um, if it's rumbling or if um, it's a watch and wait situation, you can use the first aid point, Lam Wei Shui, the appendix point, which is between stomach 36 and 37 at the most tender spot in that area. You needle that with reducing technique. Small intestine deficient and cold is essentially spleen yang deficiency. So we get the usual symptoms, dull chronic abdominal pain, it's better with heat and pressure, cold limbs, thirst for, for warm fluids and sips, loose bowels with undigested food, pale frequent urination, and there may be borybrygmus to show that the small intestine is involved. We treat it with the usual spleen yang deficient points, um, and we may add in both the lower Hussey point and the back shoe point of the small intestine. But this is essentially interior deficiency and cold in terms of eight principles. Thanks for listening. That's the very quick overview of the small intestine syndromes.